What's going on guys, Tomcat here, and today I am bringing you some Forza 4 gameplay where I'm going to be talking about uh, multiple things. I'm going to be talking about Forza 5, um, their press conference, and uh, the Turn 10 press conference, and uh, some issues that I have with the Xbox One, as well as a pretty crazy announcement, which I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way first of all. Um, and yeah, I did have to switch back to my uh, race HUD, because my drift HUD is always on, but anyway... Um, what I wanted to talk about is yesterday, or actually last night, I ordered an Elgato uh, Game Capture HD. Now, I am super psyched for this. It's supposed to arrive tomorrow on Wednesday, and I am extremely excited because I'm finally moving into full HD. I'm going to be capturing in full 1080p HDMI. Uh, sound is going to be perfect. Uh, the picture is going to be perfect. Uh, everything is going to be absolutely awesome. Now... The Elgato has a bunch of cool features built into it, like uh, built-in live commentary recording, which will basically mean that I can do a Let's Play of pretty much anything. I don't even have to worry about uh, audio recording, because right now when I do my Let's Plays, like my Need for Speed Let's Play, my uh, audio is recorded separately from the game um, from the game capture, and I have to synchronize them afterwards in the, uh, in the editing software. But with the Elgato... I can do that both at the same time, as well as being able to stream. Now, that's something I've never done before, and hopefully I'll be able to get uh, get into it at some point. Live streaming is very cool. I love watching live streams, but I've never actually hosted one myself. And the Elgato has built-in live streaming abilities, so you just sign into Twitch and live stream from there. And uh, it, should be, it should be awesome. I, I have a feeling that it's going to be... Um, it's going to be pretty epic. Now, moving on to the Forza 5 stuff. Now, the Forza 5 um, E3 announcement featured a McLaren P1, a real McLaren P1 on stage. One of two in the world, which you guys will know if you watched it. Now, that in itself is pretty awesome. The fact that Microsoft was able to get a real McLaren P1 out there, uh, actually two E3, is absolutely sweet that when that car came on stage i was like oh my god but that that thing is abs an absolutely gorgeous car an absolutely amazing car and it's going to be really fun to drive in forza 5 now a couple of the other things that they announced for forza 5 was that they are sort of completely getting rid of the uh, of the concept of ai um and i don't know how i didn't like when dan greenwald first said that that they're getting rid of AI, I was like, well, wait a minute, what are we going to race against in the career mode? But basically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to use the Xbox One's always online uh, cloud system to basically constantly uh, analyze e every single player's driving style, specifically, specifically players on your friends list, and basically analyze their driving style and put that into what would be the AI cars. So basically, you, when you do a race in single player, you're going to be racing against the style that your friends drive in, which I'm not sure how it's going to play out. It could be a good thing. It could be absolutely terrible. Um, I hope they include AI in there for the people that, um, you know, if... if somebody doesn't have a lot of people on their friends list or um, or something doesn't work properly I hope they include AI in there so the game can revert back to the AI if this um, if this cloud system uh, for some reason doesn't work right which it's it's going to be a brand new product so there are obviously going to be some bugs with it so I hope that they have an AI system that they can revert back to if uh, if stuff goes wrong now, I did miss a couple of car reveals in my previous Forza 5 video. Uh, the, um, the, oh gosh, what was it? Audi R8 V10 Plus, I believe, and the, um, and the McLaren MP4 12C were also revealed in the, uh, in the trailer. Now, the trailer also featured something that I was very, uh, very impressed by, which, which was a crash scene. Now the crash scene, and keep in mind that was a uh, an in-engine trailer, a all game footage trailer. The crash scene basically showed um, an MP4-12C and I believe an Aston Martin uh, crashing into a wall and spinning out. And what was interesting to me is the Aston Martin after the crash, it had these this 
um, not just scratches, but the bodywork was actually kind of crunched in and kind of sort of bent in irregular ways. And I really hope that the di that the damage model is dynamic, because with a dynamic damage model, the damage is always going to be realistic. It's always going to be the as it would have happened in real life. If if you know that car had hit that wall, it would have uh, the bodywork would have deformed in a certain way, or let's say if it got hit from another vehicle then the bodywork on both vehicles will have deformed in a certain way so if they can incorporate dynamic damage now that that would be very cool that would be very um very interesting quite a fail right there uh took that line way too far inside and that thing that that if they have di dynamic damage that would be interesting for drifters because you know i mean in drifting the cars are all you know patched up and beat up and it would be very interesting to actually see that in your competition drift cars. You know, like you have a beat up 240 with, you know, um, some body panels missing, some of the bodywork is crunched. You know, so it actually looks like a legit, you know, uh, drift car, JDM drift car. And I would love to see them do that. I think that's awesome. Now, moving on to some of my, some of the problems that I have with the Xbox One. Now, I don't want this to turn into an anti Xbox One rant, but. Who knows, it may end up being that way. The Xbox One requires a constant internet connection to be able to reconnect. It needs to verify your internet connection every 24 hours, which I think is a piece of crap, because if it's got to verify your connection 24 hours, or every 24 hours, um, and keep in mind that if you go offline for more than 24 hours, uh, it will lock you out of your games. You will not be able to play. This was confirmed. This is all... This, there's no rumors here this was actually confirmed if you go offline for more than 24 hours um your console uh will not allow you to play uh your games they will you'll be completely locked out you have to re-establish uh an internet connection and re-verify your account and password i believe so i mean what's supposed to happen if you go on vacation or if you don't want to play xbox for a couple of days or if you don't you know if you um like, if you want to take your Xbox with you somewhere, and the place you go to happens to have a really crappy internet connection, you're screwed. You really are. You're screwed if, if that happens. And there's there's also the deal with, you know, they were like, oh yeah, you'll be able to play your Xbox One games at your friend's house. Well, guess what? And this is also confirmed. You will only be able to play um, a game, at, an Xbox One game on a friend's console at their house for a one hour limit before you have to verify your account and password again. I mean, what is this? What is this, really? I mean, they want you every hour that you're at your friend's house playing your game, they want you to re-verify your password every hour, and I'll tell you why they want you to do that, because they want to make sure that no one else is playing your game, because that person could have also paid the, their money to Microsoft, and they don't, they, they couldn't have that, they couldn't have anybody um, not paying. I mean, come on. Come on. It's like, seriously, Microsoft is basically saying, you have to give us money for absolutely everything. And when you buy an Xbox One game, you know, you pay your money, but you don't really own that game. You know, it's, it's installed to your hard drive, and once it's installed to your hard drive, that disc is useless, really. That, the disc isn't, it's not, you know, physical property like an Xbox 360 game that you can take to your friend's house or sell or da 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 You don't really own it, which is, is kind of bad. I, I have a big issue with that. So, I mean, and PlayStation, they actually did something awesome. They reached, they, um, they made this little short, um, not commercial, but it was just a little short clip, and it said, how to, le how to lend your PS4 games to a friend. And it showed one guy with a PS4 game in his hand giving it to the other guy. And the clip ended. Which, I mean, that's what it should be. You know, that's what it should be. So, I have no idea why Microsoft is making it so complicated. It just doesn't make any sense to me. They just want more money. So, um, And I'm thinking of switching over to Sony. I don't know. But I really want to play Forza 5. So I have this huge dilemma with the, um, with this whole thing. So... If you guys enjoyed that video, don't forget to click the like button. Tell me in the comment section below what your opinions are on the Xbox One and all, all this crap related to it. 
And um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned because there will be another video coming later today, possibly even two, covering more E3 announcements. So I will see you guys then. Talk to you later.